Hello, 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 everyone. Welcome to episode 14 of the All Gunners podcast. Now, you all may be thinking, what the hell, Zed? Why are there two episodes in a week? This has never happened before. And you will be right. But there's a reason for that. We have a very, very special game coming tomorrow. We're recording this on a Friday night. We have a very important game to preview, and that is the big game against Manchester United. Now, 20 years ago, this would have been the biggest game of the season top two teams going at it, deciding the Premier League. Unfortunately, this is not the case anymore. But for the fans of Arsenal and the fans of Manchester United, this is still the biggest game for them. The rivalry is deep. And to help me discuss and preview this game and talk a bit about the performance against Chelsea, let's not forget that, as usual, is joining me my co-host, Harry. Harry, how are you, my friend, on this Friday afternoon? I love that intro, mate. You should just do. The, you should do the intro every week, my friend. You are amazing at that. Yeah, I'm good. Thanks, my friend. I'm, I'm good. Mate, mate, you see, it sounds like you're running away from responsibility, there, mate. <laughs> Sometimes it's nice to just chill, you know, it's just chill and just talk Arsenal. But the added responsibility, nah, man, you're a natural, honestly. No, oh, thanks for the compliments, mate. Okay, but. Today, everyone, we've got another special guest, and unusually for the All Gunners podcast, and first time in the history of the short history of the All Gunners podcast, we've got the Manchester United fan. Wow, wow, so, wow. So, wow, wow. Yeah, you know, you know, exactly. We did say it was the All Gunners podcast. We never said it was the All Manchester United or other football fans podcast, but we're changing it up a bit, aren't we, Harry? We're, Absolutely. We're being fair. So, without further delay, let's introduce to, to all of you our guest, Atar. How are you, my friend? Hey Zed, hey Harry, I'm good man, how are you both doing? We're good, we're good, looking forward to the game tomorrow. But before we get into the game tomorrow, I want to just talk to you both about the big game that happened Wednesday night, Arsenal v Chelsea, North London Derby, well not North London, North London Derby, sorry, London Derby, West London, Arsenal, away to Chelsea, 4-2. Atta, as a special guest today, I know you're a Man U fan and all yeah. that, but I want to get your opinion first. Before I go to Harry, what did you think of that performance from Arsenal? Well, uh, put it this way, I'm not looking forward to tomorrow after that. <laughs> uh, um, I think, to be honest with you, I mean, it's quite reflective of, of the season, I guess, a little bit, because the whole, I mean, you want a, a run of three games, of, you know, three losses, and then mm. I, was, I was just expecting Chelsea to turn you over, to be honest. Yeah, and then, and then I, I'd honestly out of the, the some of the football you played was really really good, and you could just see the an- energy from the young, you know, the younger kids, you know, Swiss yeah. Rowe and Saka and those guys. And I think on the whole, you deserved it. You definitely played really really well. Um, and I think in previewing it coming up to you know <laughs> versus Arsenal, it couldn't go any worse because we got slapped. We got slapped four 0 <laughs> at Anfield. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. For you to beat Chelsea at um, you know their ground four two, it's it's mm-hmm. not ideal. But yeah, I mean, on the performance, yeah, I mean you were really really good. You know you played really well, intense, and you know sort of what you sort of were hoping for with the previous three games, wasn't it? And um, yeah, yeah, definitely. And yeah, so I mean, begrudgingly, I have to say, yeah, it was well deserved. But I wish I wish I was sitting here <laughs> laughing at you. No, well, th- th- thank you for the honesty. That was a bit of a test, by the way. That's bad of me, but it was, it was a bit of a test to see how you, uh, what you could uh, review an Arsenal game. Yeah. But, but Harry, quickly, mate, I don't want to spend too much time on the game. It was a good game. We previewed it. I said 2-0 uh, to Chelsea. You agreed with me as well. We didn't think we would win. Are well, you surprised? I said 3-0, I think. I said, I said, <laughs> oh, yeah. I said 3-0 to Chelsea. I did, yeah. Uh, yeah, nah, um, yeah, man. Uh, just welcome to Adar as well. It's um, it's a pleasure to have him on. I think I just want to quickly, very, very, very quickly touch on the history of getting Adar on. And um, remember that charity event we were at a few weeks ago? And um, we said, didn't we? Wouldn't it be great if we just got a Manchester United fan on before the... Um, we knew this game was coming, didn't we, really? Yeah, yeah. Um, we thought, we thought Adar, that we'd be in a better place. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> not losing three, gra- three games on the bounce and winning one before playing you. But anyway, it is what it is. And um, it's, it's a pleasure to have you on and, um, and, and let, let the banter roll, let's say. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, listen, very quickly on the Chelsea game. Um, yeah, th- th- I, I think it's one of those things that sometimes you... 
you 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 expect something and and, and quite the opposite happens and uh, you know it's mm-hmm. the same as when we're talking about the Brighton game and and um, yeah and and the Southampton game you know we we were always optimistic but you know Arsenal are just Arsenal aren't they they've just Absolutely, got that habit mate. of being able to just pull out they, they, you know they, they could potentially beat Manchester City, and they nearly did didn't they, 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 they nearly, nearly did Manchester nearly did mate yeah and so. Yeah, I think on the performance, I, I, I would slightly disagree with that, that a little bit on, 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 on the performance. I think it was one of the sloppiest performances I've seen all season. <laughs> if I'm honest with you, the amount of times we're giving the ball away and really, really... I think that shows how much I've, how much I've watched you little season. <laughs> you might have watched us more than you've watched yourselves, to be honest with you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Constantly looking over your shoulders. But yeah, we were poor, to be honest with you, through periods of the game. I think the second half, we were much, much more better. Um, mm-hmm. Obviously, whatever Arteta said to them at half time worked. But I have to say, I have to say, just just summing up, is that Chelsea, two things. Number one, they disrespected us big time with that lineup because mm-hmm. th- there was literally, I mean, I know Rudiger was out injured, but some of their yeah. key key players. I mean, if you're gonna if you're gonna sort of rotate, so you rotate with three or four players, don't you? But you keep your back line the same, generally speaking. It it was an awful lineup that they'd put out and I thought actually seeing that lineup you know they're probably going to be there for the taking because those players haven't played together very much um and 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 it, and it so happened but we were we were poor but we we just weren't as poor as them in the end and um I think as I say second half we were much much more better um and we, we came out I, I, I just it was like a ping pong really the way it was like yeah, the, yeah. the way they were scoring we were scoring they it, were scoring it was a very open game it was so open. It was a brilliant game to watch, though. If you're a neutral watching that, um, it was amazing. I mean, was, getting your values, money, not, well. not <laughs> yeah. But yeah, look, it was just important to get over the line and, and look, we're back. <laughs> I say we're back because we, <laughs> we say this every, every careful. We, we, we're backwards and forwards, but yeah, we, we are back in that top four race. But tomorrow we've got to we've got to do bits, haven't we? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I, I agree with you a bit more, Harry, and the fact that the goals were a bit lucky. I think people were saying Ketia played very well up front as the number nine. He chased uh, what you call the ball down, and that's what caused the Christensen mistake as well. Uh, but I do think we're lucky. We've scored one goal, I think, in the last three games. Yeah. So we, we, did, we did get lucky with the four. I, did, I think the scoreline flattered, flattered us a lot. But a good win, and we'll take it. And Absolutely. every point, so, so, sometimes you do need to uh, things to go your way. And this was a big game against a big team. And it went our way. And I cannot be any happier. So let's move on. I think it's a very, very quick review. We should we, should we preview the time. game Liverpool versus Manchester United? No, I'm just joking. <laughs> just joking. Just joking. Just joking. No, we I haven't come on. You haven't invited you to viol- no, violate you con- today. I think so my, don't connection, don't my connection will probably fail. <laughs> <laughs> You're probably just going to go, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. I had to get that one in. No, no, no. Like it, like it. Keep the banter going. So, um, but yeah, I think just to touch on that, Liverpool were just too, too class. To be uh, honest with you, they didn't. They didn't have to be they, they that good. They, you were they, that they, no, they they were, you, we were right. so poor. Cool. I mean, no. it, it got to five minutes, <laughs> and <laughs> foolish as I am, I'm thinking, oh, okay, so they've not even done anything. And then but no, I hadn't sat down and got my popcorn out yet. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> honestly, it was just it was just a, a catastrophe, and like. Yeah. Um, I think the worst thing is, is like, I think you probably feel felt this as well in your like your being sporting Arsenal recently. Is mm. they give you hope, don't they? That actually, yes, yeah. we, we might. And then as soon as it comes crashing down, you're thinking, why did I even bother? But, <laughs> but, um, but every that's, week there's a bit of hope. Th- that's the life of a football fan, though. Yeah, that, that hope, the fresh new hope. As soon as the new game is being previewed, you look around and say, you know what? Today we can do something different. Yeah, but you know what? Guys, thank you for your uh, inputs into that. But let's move on quickly to the Manchester United game. But before we do that, I'm going to ask a a question to you that we ask all of our guests. And it's a very important question. And that's to set the, what you call, atmosphere a bit more. You say, how did you get into football? And how did you end up supporting Manchester United of all teams? Um, Yes, there is disdain in my voice. (laughs) (laughs) More than disdain. It's like a (laughs) I could crime on this uh, on this podcast. <laughs> no. um, to be honest, it's a bit, a bit of a funny story. My um, my uncle he um lived in uh, Manchester, and Salford, so he grew up close to the United ground, and he used to tell me, um, you know, some stories of like he, you know, he he saw Eric Cantona like up close and personal, like you know, he used to go to 
games and stuff. And um, I think he saw a couple of plays. You know, he was living quite close to the ground, etc. Whenever wherever he was. And um, but then he moved to to Birmingham, and that was when I was quite young. So I mean, I'd probably say I was like six, seven, maybe you know around that age. Um, and obviously back in uh, in those days, the um, you know you had to have uh, Sky or certain subscriptions to watch the Champions League games or anything, or, uh, you know even Premier League games, etc. Uh, match of the day, whatever. And um, my uncle didn't have that, but we had had the subscription at our, at my house because my dad is a, he's a football fan as well. He, um, and um, I just remember my uncle would be over like once, twice a week, minimum watching football, and he'd always be telling me about United and how you know it was his favorite team, and you know he'd be telling me the history and all of that side of things. And then I literally just grew up after that, just always watching United, always watching Man U, and obviously it was it helped that <laughs> we were doing well, <laughs> you know, like um, and it, and it wasn't a case of we were doing poor or anything like that. And then mm-hmm. um, yeah, so I think I've grown up playing football, watching football, literally any sort of football, whether it's, you know, uh, non-league or, you know, championship, you know, European football, whatever it is. And I've always, always been following Manchester United since I can remember. Um, and, uh, yeah, I think that's that's it. And I've, I've just always been a, I mean, how you can test to this. I mean, I've literally, whenever we talk, I think 90% of our conversation is football and then mm. <laughs> and the, the remainder is, is how crap Arsenal are. So, I mean, sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yeah, Seven and... points to us, one point to him. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I mean, this I think... It's a good comeback. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got to give it him. Yeah, but no, I think that's it. I've just always been in love with the, with the sport and that's, yeah, it's just always been a part of my life. Oh, nice, nice. I think we always find that there's a bit of inspirational story from somewhere. Someone has to give that inspiration to get you into football. But I want to, I want to chuck this one in, Zed, actually, because I, on, I, I really on. thought that he would mention this, actually, because I, I, I remember, because look, we've known each other from when we were sort of just out of our nappies, really, as good mm. as. Um, but you didn't mention your, your trial? Oh, no, that's... Um... <laughs> A trial, yeah, the trial, yeah, yeah, the trial. No, to be honest, what actually happened is, is um, there was like um some trials that um I say trials, there was just like a um a football um at Birmingham City because obviously I'm from Birmingham, I live in Birmingham from Birmingham and um at Birmingham City and um I remember the ones that were successful, like either there was trials or there was a tournament or something was happening. Um, as part of like up north in Manchester, so, um, so I, I can't remember exactly because I think I was only about ten at the at that time, and um, I just remember there was eleven plus exam the same day <laughs> and, uh, for grammar school, and my mum basically said, "Now nah, you're going, you're going to the grammar school <laughs> exam," and that, that was it. That was my brief. Like, uh, so I had these um, football trials, all oh, these, you know, at, at Birmingham City, and then. Um, there's the opportunity to go further or go um, with um, other clubs as well, but it just sort of stopped straight away because mum was like, "No, no, you've got you've got this <laughs> eleven plus exam. You're going to do that instead," and that was it, really. Yeah. Wait, so you could have been a famous footballer. Nah, but... I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> instead, you went to grammar school. I, yeah. I, I have to say, you, you know, uh, playing ability wise, um, I, him and his, his brother. And, I'm not going to mention his name just in case you need to get permission uh, from him. At, the, <laughs> at that stage, we're, we're, we're sort of above and beyond. I think I think um, your brother was also a star involved in the same thing as well, if I remember correctly. Yeah, so we, like I said, we've, my, my dad's been a avid sort of sportsman for all his life. I think he played hockey for Pakistan at one stage and, you know, and he's football, um, uh, you know, mad as well and stuff. And I think, yeah, we've just always been sports lovers and um yeah i guess we've always just always always played it and we're always against each other we're really competitive as well and you know and obviously in our community we do a lot of we do a lot of um events uh and or kickabouts between ourselves which as how we, how we can testify <laughs> again it always gets heated so i think it's, it's just that passion's always there isn't yeah it? passion is the, the, probably the right word i would describe for um Atta. Mm-hmm. um he, he takes his football very seriously and I, th- I think I think that rivalry is part of our relationship as well because it's because as you said in your intro, 
Z about the rivalry between Manchester United and Arsenal was the sort of main yeah. football rivalry in the Premier League, wasn't it? From yes, absolutely. Yeah, started. yeah. And, and we've always had that kind of um, closeness, no doubt. But when it comes to football, just absolute bitter enemies. And um, it's it's been on the pitch, off the pitch. But but we've always been able to have a really realistic and pragmatic conversation as well when yeah. we've always been together, which is good, isn't it? Yeah, 100%. 100%. I think we, you know... Friendship and that always comes to the fore, doesn't it? Regardless, we'll never fall out over it. No, no, good, good. I, I, I like that spirit, right? Okay, guys, let's move on to the important topic of today's episode, which is Manchester United versus Arsenal. Now, Arsenal at home, Manchester United away. From a Manchester United point of view, I'm going to touch on first off. I'll break down the recent form. What's been going on at Manchester United? Obviously, I've seen tidbits. I've seen Roy Keane moan about it on every YouTube video I ever see from Manchester United. But what's going on, and what's what's your feeling for tomorrow? Shout out Roy Keane! I love that guy. <laughs> uh, do you know what? It's at the minute is very very bleak. Unfortunately, we're not playing good football. Um, there's off the field issues. There's on the field issues. There's club issues. There's a lot going wrong at the uh, at the minute at the club. I'll mainly go on talk about the sports, uh, you know, the football side of things, I guess, rather than the rest mm. of it. But on the pitch, it just is either there's, it, you know, when you go into a game and you think, oh, we, we're going to, we're going to win this. I'm going to win this comfortably. For example, I'll give you an example, Norwich. And then, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, we're going to win this completely. We're two nil up at home. Right. And you're thinking, right, this is going to, we're doing well. It's going to go fine. Before you know it, it's two all, and, and they, they had chances to win. They had chances to go ahead, but bar a you know, a, uh, you know, a Cristiano Ronaldo hat trick, we were we were looking in trouble. I think the problem we're having is 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 that some of the off the field issues are getting are seeping into the uh, the football itself. You know, for example, the, the manager search, and you know, all of the criticism around Harry Maguire and all the other. Players like Pogba always seems to get some criticism. Um, you know, everything with Ronaldo, that captaincy, the armband, all of that negativity that's seeping into the club. And on top of that, they talk, you know, players that don't want to be at the club that are still at the club, like your Lingards and, you know, this sort of, these lot. And then the football itself is dire, it's slow, it's predictable. There's flashes of brilliance, individual brilliance, potential sometimes, you know. But apart from that, it's it's just really boring to watch. It's just the players aren't got no passion. They don't. I mean, you probably saw it against City in the second half. I don't know if you watched that game. We just gave up basically. Yeah, yeah. Against yeah. against Chelsea, it's very poor. Very poor. Even against Liverpool, I mean, that that was just honestly, you know, you think four nil to Liverpool, you know, fine if Liverpool were on blistering form. But don't get me wrong, they played well, but they didn't have mm. to. They didn't have to, you know, really get out of third gear, second, third gear to, to beat us. It was just, yeah, it's just, it showed the chasm or the, the difference in the level of the clubs and uh, the teams, I guess, uh, United and City and Liverpool and these top clubs. And yeah, if I carry on, I'll just be depressed, man. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just not good. It's just not good at the minute. Gosh, yeah. he, he knows that, doesn't he, how it, it feels to be an Arsenal fan now, doesn't he? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. He, 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 this is exactly how we've been for years and years, to be honest with you. It just, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, th- I think the, the, the clubs were at a point in the early 2000s when I touched on it in my intro, at the height of their powers. And in our lifetimes, we've seen them go down quite yeah. dramatically. And at a point where... Sorry, Ferguson's left, where Arsene Wenger's left. There's been a lot of similarities of that rebuild needed. Yeah. But now I get the feeling that from an Arsenal point of view, they have got it right, the trajectory of it at least. Um, the recruiting is better. It's more sensible. It's not what you call what it was before, bringing 30-year-olds for quick fixes and say, OK, you know what, we'll get back into the Champions League because we have this experienced player on enormous amount of wages and that'll fix it. But I feel with Manchester United, they're still thinking the same thing. Maybe that's about to change. But since Sir Alex Ferguson left, all I've seen is a business operate trying to make as much money as possible mm, by yeah. having good you know, star players in. But no thought has been given as to what the style of play needs to be, yeah. which players are needed in which position, and who needs to be bought in. They spent ninety million on Pogba to try to play him in a number six position when mm. he was best again uh, playing a more free role next to more solid 
defensive or midfield pair with Perlo on. I don't remember the other person, but you know, they're class players and he was allowed to do what he wants. Even for France, he's allowed to do what he wants because there's the machine known as Angolo Conte. Yeah. Right. I think, I think but, the one, I want to just quickly ask a dark question about this because I know yeah, this is going to come up, but like, okay, we, we, we talk about, look, there's definitely a theme there between our owners and your owners that basically we haven't really got very good football people up there that yeah. are making footballing decisions for our clubs. Yeah. But do you, do you, you, I know you were an Ollie out guy. Do yeah. You, do you, do you regret being Ollie out given how there's been significant more decline? And, and let me sort of t- give you a bit of background around my answer. I'm, I'm, I'm remembering Ollie and the away, not just the away win, but actually knocking PSG out the Champions League. Yeah. I'm, I'm remembering that first run of games that, um, how many, how many meta games was it where you were just literally just sitting, sitting, sitting and blistering, Counter, just, just, yeah. just blowing mm-hmm. teams down on a counter attack? And I'm thinking, shit. This this guy for for a guy who's basically relegated a team and come from the whatever Norwegian league or wherever he's come yeah. from, he's actually mm-hmm. doing really well here. There's a lot of talent at his disposable disposal disposal, and and there's clearly then been a decline. But you know how Arsenal then stuck with Arteta and it kind of yeah. did help. Do you feel a little bit of regret now and hope that wish that actually you gave him a little bit more time? No, <laughs> I really don't. <laughs> You know, do you know why? My my answer is this. Initially, when we had Ollie, like you said, it was counter-attacking football. But um, once teams worked that out and they sort of were like, oh, actually, we're not, we're not going to give, uh, you know, give them the opportunity to counter and we're just going to do a low block. We were devoid of any options. We just could not break the, the, the low block unless it was like a moment of brilliance from someone. We just couldn't create enough. We couldn't score enough. I know there were certain, some games we did and, you know, but a lot of the time it was really, you know, again, it was really slow, you know, boring football. And you've got to remember that towards the end of Ollie's reign, we were losing to, you know, I think we lost to Watford 4-1. I think we lost to, um, was it Liverpool again? Uh, or was it um, City? I can't remember. You know, we were losing games and we were losing comfortably and heavily. I think the problem with Ollie was, is like, yes, I, you know, he's a legend and whatever, but I think he was just unfortunately, he got, he took us as far as he could. I, I, I respect and appreciate what he did in terms of getting rid of some some players that, you know, were slightly dead weight players we didn't need or we weren't going to use and whatever, whatever. But in terms of getting the, the, the best out of the team, I think he got as much as he could. I just mm-hmm. didn't see much coaching going on from him. So, that was my issue. So how much of that was down to Oli as the manager? All the players that he had at disposal, all the players that we be bought in, right? So a lot of the players that Manchester United bought under Oli, right? Yeah, they were the kind of players who were individual stars. I get that, right? Yeah, uh, and he tried to fit Pogba and Bruno Fernandes into the same team, which is impossible. It's the same thing that, to give an Arsenal perspective, Unai Emery and Arteta tried, and to a certain extent. Uh, uh, Arsene Wenger tried, was trying to get Aubameyang and Lacazette in the same team. Yeah. It didn't quite work out because they wanted to occupy the same space. So how much of that is down to, and now it's a big question and people are probably going to hate me for it, but here's a question I want to ask. Do you think bringing Ronaldo back, considering what he's done for the club right now as well this season, he's a top scorer, was a good idea for the team overall? <sighs> See, this is this is that question. <laughs> This, this is the question. This is a question. I think this is a lot of people are saying bring Ronaldo back is what cost Ali his job. Yeah. But to be honest with you, I think again it's very difficult to say or a cut, a, you know, a cut straight answer to is it or not? Is it not? Because I think <clears throat> having someone like Ronaldo in your team, a world class striker like him, maybe he's mm. obviously, obviously he's declined at, at this age. But you know who'll get you goals. It's about managing yeah. his, his minutes as well. Like you know, mm. you can't be playing as a thirty-seven-year-old every game for ninety minutes yeah. the whole game. So bringing him in, I think, is very good for the team generally for the morale, experience. And younger strikers are going to get, and you know, to tap into his knowledge, his his advice, etc. And if he's managed his minutes correctly, properly, I think it's it's a no-brain. I mean, he's won us, he's, he's scoring hat tricks, he's winning us games, he's winning us yeah. points in the Champions League, and when we when we were in there, you know, he's he's, he's winning us games or getting us draws at least. But yeah. then, but then the difficulty comes when you're playing him full time all the time. There's no other yeah. strike. Cavani's been injured. Rashford's lacking form drastically. 
you know, with Martial's gone on loan and he's playing every week and week out, it then it does look as though actually it wasn't the right decision. But I think I think it's hard to say because when he first came, if you know, he was doing he was doing well, he scored just, mm-hmm. you know, whatever. But I think bringing him back, I think part of it was because we didn't want City to get him. But yeah. I, also, I also do think it's not a bad bad shout if he wasn't playing week in, week out. But I think, unfortunately, the way things have turned out, it looks like a bad signing and it looks like he's disrupting the you know the morale or whatever. But I just don't buy it. Someone like him, if he's demanding more from the t- from the players and they don't like it, then that says more about the players than him, I think, personally. No, that, that's a fair point. I think my, my issue is um, Ronaldo on the pitch is unbeatable. Let's be honest, he is arguably the best player to ever play the game, right? Yeah. He's he's the top one 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 zero zero point zero one percent of yeah. players that ever will play the game and ever have played the game, right? Let's not get that wrong. My issue with bringing Ronaldo back is the chemistry of the team. Now, yeah. just to look back at the early results of the season, you were beating teams four five nil and you were winning against dogged teams like Wolverhampton, right? to get results. As soon as you chuck Ronaldo into the mix, while he's a good striker, you have to build your team around him. Yeah. Right? So this is and, yeah. And at the same time, at, no no at the same time you've got someone who wants to demand. He's a very competitive person. That's why he's there. Right? Yeah. That's why he's as good as he is. But getting that kind of a personality into the dressing room, do you think it had a negative effect in the dressing room rather than a positive one? Yeah. So um before I answer that, going back to you saying about, you know, initially when he came, he was doing well and whatever. But then, yeah. again, I think that goes back to the coaching because as soon as things weren't going that way, there's so many games this season where Ronaldo's just not featured. He's not been involved. And mm-hmm. that must that must come down to coaching, in my opinion. It must come down to what the work's being done on a training pitch if it, or what work Do, do you think he's afraid, afraid to drop him at all? I think I think is. I think I think part of it is he is, but I think part of it is as well is that who else can he play? Rashford's so out of form that what do you do? You, just, you know, I mean, we had to play Rashford against Liverpool because obviously Ronaldo, you know, the sad news that happened mm, is, yeah. is is certain. Uh, you know, again, I mean, Rashford and Alanga against Van Dijk and Matic, it was just a mismatch, wasn't it? So, and obviously Martial's gone on loan and Cavani's injured or. I don't know if he's injured, he's having a payday, I don't know what he's doing. But, <laughs> but aren't, so, like, we didn't, you know, we, we, we're, we're struggling. So, I think he sort of ha- has to play Ronaldo as well. But I think, um, going back to your questions, Ish, in terms of the morale of the group and stuff, I think if we're winning and Ronaldo's demanding, players don't care. They're like, yeah, yeah, look look at this guy, he's such a good guy, you know, he's, mm-hmm. he's always hungry. But when we're losing and he still wants to win and he's still demanding, it's the other the other players they just can't reach that level of that mentality. I think, and I think that's when it can be a bit negative. But he's doing it for the betterment of the team, I think. But it can be seen a different way, I think. But yeah, yeah. it's it's difficult. No, I, I get that. I think for me, I do agree with you one point, which is that Ali never truly had the dressing room. Right, yeah. even before Ronaldo came up, there seemed to be a heated discussion over the captaincy issue. So Maguire was made captain, whereas clearly Bruno Fernandes wanted to be captain. Yeah. Right. And Ronaldo came back, I think he kind of expected to be captain as well. So you had this three or four players who were your star players. Can you imagine literally... how Harry, Harry Maguire goes home and goes, I'm I'm the captain of Manchester captain. United. I'm Ronaldo's I'm... captain. It's just it's just crazy, isn't it? You, you, that's what I'm saying. So right you can clearly see Harry Maguire's confidence absolutely shot. That guy cannot play football anymore, right? He turn, he plays for England and he turns up because that's the familiar surrounding, right? Yeah. He's happy there. He turns up to Manchester United and as the captain, I just feel like he's undermined by every single player there. Yeah. There is no respect for it. And that's not down to Harry Maguire only. Yes, it is his responsibility. But the manager, as soon as Ronaldo and Bruno Fernandes came and said, no, Bruno, shut up. You're not yeah. the captain, Harry. Harry, give us a team talk. Ronaldo, sit down. I don't care. We play yeah. together, good buddies. I don't care. You're the best player, but I'm the manager. Yeah. I think, do you know, the problem is as well is, is I think the with Harry Maguire, I think I was listening to um, Keane and, and Carragher and, you know, on, they were doing this like, you, I can't remember if it was Sky, whatever, whatever it was. They were yeah. talk, talking about Maguire and, and stuff. And Keane was talking about going back to basics. Maguire just needs to play good football. You know, he just needs to do the basics right and everything. And then they were talking about how, like, 
it you know if he does that then the confidence will come and then the rest will happen and similar to what you've said is that if these people are in in the dressing room some of them might not fully um what's the word um may not fully respect him and things like that but Keane sort of said that he doesn't think that mm. that happens he, he still thinks that these players do respect him but Keane sort of alluded to something which I didn't think about at the time which I think is quite a good shout that yeah when Maguire's come to such a big club you know one of the biggest clubs in the world yeah you want you want to have a couple of seasons to sort of fill yourself in don't you to, to make sure yeah. you're okay and to then to immediately be almost immediately be given them the captain armband it throws you off a little bit and, and, and the extra responsibility, the added pressure you've got on top of that, it seeps into everything. So he's on pressure from one, being a captain of one of the biggest clubs in the world. Two, he's new at the club. Three, he's got people like Bruno Ronaldo and, uh, you know, Ronaldo shouting, you know, because you see the antics on the pitch when they're not yeah, happy yeah. and stuff. And then his own form's dipped as well. So like, yeah. it's a lot going on for, for him. And I think you are right. I think with the, 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 the captaincy it is a big debate and it is something that needs to be sorted. But, I mean, if if he's a captain, the players should just get behind him. And, and I mean, it says, like Keane says, it says a lot that the players, if, if Maguire came there and he's new to the club and they gave him captaincy about the players that are already there. like I just want to put it out there. Yeah. Maguire is the biggest load of dog shit as a footballer I've ever seen. In the Premier League, and he's so overrated, <laughs> and the media treat him so I'll nicely. Just, Harry, Harry, but just one question: What is Nicholas Pepe doing? Because if we're <laughs> going to talk about players that are earning a living, that Pepe's, I thought it was a burger place. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I'm glad you got that one out of the way. But even you agree with me, right? That Harry Maguire is absolute he's, trash. Listen, he's listen trash. I'll be honest about Maguire. He's out of form. And I have to say this because in the Euros, don't get me wrong, he got the Euro. He was in the team of the of the of the, of the tournament. tournament. Yeah. In the Euros, so he's not a bad defender. He's not. If he, if we're talking about a great defender, yeah, I don't I think can't he's see that. The, the, the road great, to the Euros, but... I thought there weren't really too many hard teams I had to play. To be honest with you, I mean, yeah, I could have won. I could have got into that team. You know. Um... Yeah, I've seen you play, Harry. You know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go. Let's work, say worse still. You could have got into that team then, right? Yeah. Look, the point about it is, is, is for playing for Manchester United, he's been absolutely atrocious. And and how this friendly the, has, and how friendly the media are to him. I mean, Radnick's coming yeah. out going, yeah, he's getting a few death but threats. So I think no, no, listen, listen. He's, got he's getting a few death threats. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna nah, just come out and say he's been shit, and that's why we're dropping him. I mean, yeah, but nobody's ever gonna say that, man. He's been nope. shit though, man. This season he has been really poor. He I definitely is agree. Stealing last the season, living. last season he was he was way better. His confidence is shot and he's bad. I think a back three suits him better. Eighty or, million pounds. Come on, man. No, but this season he's completely been rubbish. I agree with that. But last season he was not wasn't bad. Last season he was one of our better defenders. Actually, Sorry, last I, I just thought I'd get that one in anyway. No, yeah, okay. <laughs> no, 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 that's all right. Um, so I mean, I, I think I does use the the Pepe one now. He's like run out now completely. <laughs> I've got, I've got a few more. You've got, a few more. You've, got, you've got one more in particular, haven't you? Yeah. <laughs> which, you can, which you can't use. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Let, let, so just rounding that topic out, I think um, <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll come back to Manchester United and where they go from here. But Harry, I'm going to come to you. You've been quite quietly patient as we've been talking about Manchester United. But let's get on to Arsenal. So I'm going to stay try to be neutral i'm going to be honest i'm going to try to be neutral but i want to get your opinion going into this game from an arsenal point of view can you preview that for us what do you think yeah look i, I think i think Zed, we, we should we should beat them you know on paper you know mm-hmm. um that look I, I say overall in the last sort of 10 games our form has been way better than theirs um we should have beat them at old trafford and i think i thought even if he was being honest he'll say yeah we were outplayed and and and, and we should have lost but you know, we we Cristiano, and that's the difference. And that's why I was, I was silently listening to you earlier. Is, is that <laughs> without Cristiano, you guys would be in a relegation battle, and there's no lie about it. The goals that he's provided and the important. I mean, like he, he scored a hat trick the other week against was, was it Norwich? Was it? No, it's against Tottenham. And, and, they, and they scored two. As well. Didn't they score two goals in in it that? Was, it was two nil, yeah. and then they scored two to make it two all. Yeah. And then Ronaldo scored that free kick. Yeah. Yeah. He scored a hat trick against Tottenham as well. So, so without his goals, that's two nil to Norwich. You, you'd say, wouldn't you?
you? Yeah, you know? yeah. So what I'm, what, what, what I'm trying to say is, is that actually Ronaldo has been a and so tomorrow's game is is for me is about who plays. To be honest with you, and and, and I think he is to, he is in the squad. He's in the squad, yeah. And, and we needed to get this in in said earlier, really, that you know. Um, you know, really, really sad commiseration for yeah. you know, his loss, and, and and it's devastating for that to happen to anyone. So thoughts go out mm. to him and his and his family. And I have Definitely. to say as well, with what the, the Scousers did over in um, Anfield was was a classic. Best thing they've ever done, oh. really. Yeah. <laughs> it's the best thing they've ever done. Get out of here! <laughs> you didn't watch a game after it, did you? Really? Yeah. After that, I didn't. I didn't know we played. <laughs> well, they were already one nil up by then, so you, you didn't probably yeah. turn the TV probably off too. anyway. Getting back to the the the, to, to the, the preview for tomorrow, I, I, I think the problem with Arsenal is, is, and it doesn't matter who who plays tomorrow, is is that United will probably come out and turn into prime 98, 99 season <laughs> United tomorrow, and they'll probably end up sort of playing really, really well and making it a game. Um, should we beat them, we absolutely... Ha- United have got nothing to play for right now. Absolutely mm. nothing. I think they're way out of the Champions League places. If we beat you, we're level on points with you. Um, I don't think you are. No, we are. I, yeah, I, I, yeah I they, they are 57, they're 54 points. With, right with, you'll have a game in hand on us. Exactly. Yeah, but, yeah, that's probably why, yeah. But if we beat you, then we go something like, what, six points clear? Yeah, but I mean, we're rubbish, man, so I wouldn't, get, I wouldn't scream. Hence, I wouldn't hence why I said you've got it. nothing to play for, you know. And, yeah. you know, look, the thing is, is I'm, I'm still trying to be as humble as possible, but real at the same time, is that season after season, you know, for me, mm-hmm. not not getting into the Champions League, the next best thing is, shit, where do United finish and where do we? Because that's always been the rivalry for me, to be honest with you, you know. I hope we, f- I hope we finished eighth. <laughs> if, if, if we don't get top four, so yeah. we're out of Europe. I, I'd love to see you on a Thursday night because we can give you <laughs> no, the no, same eight, banter. No, no, eight is out of Europe. Yeah, yeah, we'd like to give you the same banter that you were. No, in fact, finish seventh in the Conference League because I think the <laughs> banter we would love to give you, right, no, you know, is what we've been. Look, but it's only what we've been giving back and it's only what we've deserved at times, Ed, to be honest with you. You know, we haven't been there. Oh, absolutely, yeah. The, what what we need to do tomorrow is is. Is Arteta needs to be saying to the players the same as what he said against Chelsea. If you want to play in the Champions League, these are the games you've got to win, right? And absolutely, when you look at some of the form of of of, of United's players at the moment, you know, bar mm. Ronaldo, he's been up, but he's still banging in lots of goals from. If we can keep him quiet, you know, Saka, Smith Rowe, Martinelli, um, and Ketia now, Ad- you know, Odegaard, <laughs> Ad- 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 all all of these. If, if they click come on, tomorrow, don't don't put in Ketia in there. Come on, guys. <laughs> He's a one game, good game against Chelsea. I have, I have to say, I, have to say Zed, I don't know whether it was you. I was saying this too that he's probably not going to score again this season. Is he? Yeah, really? he, he, he was. Good. He was episode thirteen last last episode that he said. But no, it's, 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 it's done. because, because Chelsea released him. That's why he, he thought I better score against him. <laughs> well, why, why not? I heard that. Um, as I said earlier, when I was bantering you, Adar, that Maguire's going to be dropped. I, I heard that's, that's yeah, quite, yeah, quite I've serious heard. news. I'm not serious, but I mean, it's quite r- it's, it's reliable. Good, it's good for us, <laughs> it's bad for you. <laughs> so so who comes in? I think, to be honest, I think, I think we're using this partly because of what's happening outside of personal issues with, you know, the threat to his house. I mean, that's it's bullshit. Just, just... Rashford gets threats every day. Have you seen his Twitter? No, I know, I know. But what I'm saying is that... that they're threatening, obviously, bombs, and apparently there's a bomb at his house. But regardless, but that's disgusting. I just want to say that should never happen, no matter how badly a player is playing or you don't like him, whatever. So that that's one thing. But I think if I'm he does, stay go... I'm only messy now. I agree. Yeah. With you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think in terms of, I mean, I pen, I think Varane's back in training. I don't know if he's going to play though. But I think if that's the case, it'll either be Lindelof and Varane or Lindelof and Bailly. Probably. Lind- Linda shit. Sorry, Lindelof and <laughs> Lind- Lindelof and Varan or Lindelof and Bai. Okay, and Bai yeah, hasn't Varane's played com- a lot. Lately, and Varan's just coming back from injury, so he hasn't yeah. been playing either. So um, yeah. uh, I mean, and, and that's the thing against us. If you don't us, win four 0 I'll be surprised. As, as against us, Bai, he turns into prime Cannavaro, doesn't he? Let's um, be honest. Yeah. You know, honest, no, but <laughs> he's Cannavaro one second, then he's and then he's tightest bramble the next. So well, that's, well, that's after his fist. But yeah, look, I think I think we've got enough to beat. We're at home. We've got to mm. be the team that it, it comes out the blocks first, scoring very very early. And, and and then look, we we get a couple of goals in that first half. It it, 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 it could be an interesting game. But um, I, I, I'm being real now. As I say, I don't think the performance against Chelsea was amazing, although the result was. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, I am a bit worried. I can't. Lie. It's the confidence you'll get from that, though, isn't it? 
Yeah, but it, it, the second half, yes. But I think just it's it's there's a, something since the party and Tierney injury that has just shook the team and its confidence. Yeah. It's almost like you know, like when your team has played together and all of those pieces in the jigsaw have been together together because they're so young and they're so sort of inexperienced in being in this mm-hmm. position. It's like one piece of that jigsaw puzzle goes and it mentally affects everyone. And I yeah. think that's, and I think then the manager and, and that's what happened with Liverpool with Van Dijk went. Isn't it, it? Well, exactly. But, but, yeah. but, 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 yeah. but, but, but the, the realistic thing is, is, is that Liverpool at that point didn't really have very good cover for Van Dijk. That's why they sort of lost. To be, some, yeah, to be honest, they lost. They lost Van Dijk. They lost what? Matic. They lost Gomez. They they lost that's true. Game. That's true. That they had a very mm. poor season for injuries, and they've actually yeah. had a very good season this summer. But, but as far as Arsenal concerned, Adar, I think re- realistically is the manager made some really, really bad mistakes against um, <clears throat> Brighton. Yeah, and Southampton, mm-hmm. and and he rectified them against Chelsea by bringing Al Nenny in. Uh, yeah. And we talked yeah. about this on the was, previous. Was it podcast, Xhaka when he, and he put Xhaka left? Xhaka back. left back. Yeah. 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 Really, really big schoolboy error. Now that he's sorted it, I think <clears> you know that 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 midfield. Xhaka had a brilliant game against Liverpool. To be honest, with you. I mean he was turning uh, into prime Liverpool, in the Chelsea. Chelsea. <laughs> Chelsea, Chelsea. Against, Chelsea. against Chelsea, yeah, he, 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 he had a good game, and I think. I think if he if he learns and and sticks with a similar kind of team, I'd like to see Martinelli up top myself now. To be honest with you, starting. So no Lacazette. No, no Lacazette, and and I've and I've been pillaged for this all over because Lacazette, you know, is one of my favourite players, but yeah, he's just not. He's just. Form. It's it, like it's, it's not... like a Maguire issue, isn't it? At the moment, he's going no, to be but dropped. The thing with Lacazette is, is like his obviously his whole purpose is to score or assist, but he doesn't seem to be doing either. Not in the last three or four games, no. Yeah, exactly. No, yeah, no. so so yeah. I think look, if he puts the right team. Out and we come out and use the confidence from Chelsea. Why not? Mm. Uh, uh, I, th- I, th- I think we should be winning two three nil. I, I just don't see any other result other than an Arsenal win, honestly. However, that's, that's, I, thought, I have to about. say this. I have to say this. If Ronaldo gets the service, and I'll tell you this now, Zed, you will agree with me on this. He loves playing against is, Arsenal. Is, is he loves playing, but United are still a much better attacking team than Arsenal. If you look at uh, uh, Zed, will chuck the the xG stats and all that business crap that I don't really get right um, you are a much better attacking outfit than us and if it I clicks for you so, on the day man. if it clicks for you on the day you will score goals as the well the thing is we've, we've got moments or I say moments we've got players that can if they turn up like Ronaldo Fernandez. Pogba's injured for the season now by the way so he's out um, you know I'm like Vic Cavani I really Cavani's do Cavani's not playing yeah, and good. I don't think he's even in the squad to be honest with you so I think really, if you can keep Ronaldo quiet, and if Bruno has an off day, which he has been recently from what well, a lot of the season, but he had an off day, football. loads of off days, and then he scored against us, didn't he, at Old Trafford? Yeah, I know. And uh, did he score against you? Ronaldo scored two, I think. I know uh, he scored a penalty, and um... he scored two, and I think he um, Fernando uh, Fernandez Bruno. scored. Okay, one. may have actually, yeah, yeah. and because um... we're the best at that, you see. When when yeah. you haven't scored for months and months and months, when you haven't won <laughs> ten games, but, come no, to the Emirates and we'll give yeah. you some gifts. No, to be honest, I mean Lukaku didn't do anything against you last game, did he? So uh, Lukaku's gone. <laughs> let's, 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 I, was <laughs> fully, let's... I was fully expecting him to score, though. I really was. Yeah, I, I think that's what we previewed in the last last episode as well. But yeah, I, I, Harry, I do agree with you. It just seems like it's one of those things. It's like Harry Kane; he just likes to turn up and score against Arsenal. And Ronaldo's done that. But it's not them, Zed. It's, it's our fault. It's us. We let it happen. Oh, of course, yeah. of course, of course. I think I think there's a bit of a fear that comes in. I think the nerves are definitely going to be there because the players do know how big of a game this is mentally for them rather than actually on the numbers game. Just to point it out to you, Harry, your XG stat was wrong. Arsenal are better for goals this season. Yeah, than definitely. United. We're so right. bad. We're so yeah. bad. It's, it's not much for difference. I knew, I think Z- I knew, Z- one, but... I knew Zed would correct me, but that is shocking. No, how you haven't seen United play this season. No, no, no United. No, 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 no. But but we're, we're something like seventeenth um, for we're, putting. We must be eighteenth. <laughs> yeah, must be. Yeah, I mean it's. Um, yeah. That is that. I mean, then even more, we we, we have to beat them. Then don't we tomorrow? To be fair. I, yeah. If you ask me, I think honestly, I can't see anything more than or anything other than an, an Arsenal win because after, especially after that. I know. I think we might put up a bit more of a fight after losing to Liverpool, but I still think your confidence you get from the Chelsea win, the the you know the the 
form that we're in and on top of that you're at home and on top of that I mean it's it's going to be a big thing for you chasing down Tottenham um we just I just don't think we'll we'll be at the races unfortunately fair play fair play I I, I think United will still put in a performance they have scored more goals than Arsenal this season so they've scored 52 goals for Arsenal's 49 I think the point is Arsenal because of the lack of that killer striker is not really putting away the chances they should be. You know, some of the half chances that should be put away, they're not being put away. And some of the easier chances are not being put away. So it's coming at the end of like Eddie Nketiah's first goal against Chelsea, where a bit of luck comes your way and do it and you get the goal. But Manchester United, Harry, I do know where you're coming from. Uh, they do have the better forward talent in terms of goal scoring, not for the creativity, but for the goal scoring. Fernandes is a good finisher. Ronaldo is obviously the best finisher in the world. And, you know, Rashford can't hit a bomb drone these days. Anyway, yeah. so that he's, he's gone. But overall, I think Arsenal should win. right? Yeah. But whenever it comes against Manchester United, whether it's home, whether it's away, it's always going to be a tough game. It's always going to be a tense game. So it could go either way for me, really. I don't think it's a given that Arsenal should win. Nah, you lot, you lot being clever. <laughs> no. <Nah. laughs> You like just don't want to admit that you're favourites just in case you lose. You'll know, no, what, no, you'll no. know what happens if this pod doesn't make it to YouTube at uh, <laughs> <laughs> five tomorrow. <laughs> I thought there was going to be a, um, a follow up on like a, a reaction of the yeah, game. Yeah, let's, let's do it. Yeah, let's do it. Let's, we, 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 will, we will do that. And we'll compare how accurate we were. But just to wrap this topic up. I mean, okay, I, I might yeah. change his telephone number uh, tomorrow at three o'clock. <laughs> no, I mean. Obviously, well, yeah, we'll just see what happens, but yeah. it's not looking forward to it. No, I, I think it, I still think it'll be a tense game. I think it'll be a decent game. I don't want to see a dead rubber where if both teams are just sitting back and not attacking and not doing anything. I think you're going to start quickly and we're going to crumble. I think we, we should, I, I think we should do it early, and then that's I, think, it. I, I, I think Arsenal should come out the gates flying because of the confidence. And if we get the first early goal, that's going to be good. But yeah. against Manchester United, I will not be comfortable unless there's a two goal lead because Ronaldo can make stuff out of nothing. Right? Yeah, so, so we're, we're, yeah. Yeah, say, say what you want about his impact, but when it comes on the pitch, that guy can do miracles. Yeah. Are you going right? to get predictions then, Zed, on this? Or... Uh, I'm, I was just about to do that, mate. I'm just about to do it. So, just finally, to wrap up this topic then, Harry, I'll come to you first. What do you think is the score tomorrow? I, I actually think that it's going to be high scoring on both sides. Um, okay. I, I, I can, it'll I can, definitely be high scoring on your side because we can't defend. I, I, I can see, I can see this being a little bit of a, a similar game to the Chelsea game. I, I can, I can see a poor, scrappy game, um, certainly on both sides, um, mm-hmm. and 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 I'm, I'm probably going to shade it just because of us pulling in some of that confidence from um, from Chelsea game. I'm going to just say four three to us. Four three. Wow. Okay, do, wow. Do, you remember, do you remember that game Seven at the, the, Emir- the Emirates a couple of seasons ago with Emery? And um, th- it was just end to end. Yeah. For the lights. Do you remember? Yeah. That? Yeah. And we're yeah. doing all right, isn't he? <laughs> 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 let, 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 let's not go there. I think our viewers can check out our last episode. Gosh, if that's the oh, best, congratulations. Know, if that's the best he's got, mate, you might as well just <laughs> shut his pod off now, man. <laughs> give, it, give it him. <laughs> yeah. I'll say 4 3 Z. 4 3. Okay, great. I thought, what's your prediction for tomorrow? Honestly, I think it'll be 2 2 0, 3 0, maybe. We may get a goal. We may. Uh, this is to Arsenal, by the way. We, okay. may, we may get a goal if there's a penalty. But... All right. Is, is it fair to say three one? Well, yeah. Manchester United are very good at getting penalties. Yeah, <laughs> not this season. <laughs> um, yeah, I think I think maybe two nil, three nil to you. To be fair. Okay. All right. All right. We'll, we'll go with that. I think it'll be two one to Arsenal, just edging out because I still see it as a tense game tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, I've seen too many, you know, Manchester United Arsenal games, and they never go as predicted. So I'm gonna go on the side of caution and say it's two one to Arsenal because I'm still a Arsenal supporter at the end of the day. I have to say we win. But guys, let's do one final thing before we wrap up this episode, which is a combined eleven for the current team. Oh, Zed, Zed, Zed. <laughs> Let me save you five minutes here, mate. <laughs> 
Come on, man. Oh, come are, on, we talking about, are we talking about form or, or, or just... Let's not, let's not waste his time no, no, now. No, no, listen, Adar, are we on. talking about unform or are we talking about just... just a combined season? 11, Zed. Come on. Yes, Adar. combined. Uh, you know what? I'm, I'm picking be, up the Sky every, Sports it will, thing. Why it will not? be every Arsenal player except for the striker position for Ronaldo. There you go. See you later. Good night, guys. No, but, are we talk- no, but this is what I'm asking. Are we talking about unform? Uh, we're talking this season. We're yeah, talking on form. Last, last, last five games. Let's put it last five games. Come on, last, last five games. You've lost three. Last five exactly. games. You don't select anyone, do you, really? To be fair. You, <laughs> yeah. you select the youth team. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but you still have to. That's what, it's yeah. difficult. That's why I'm making it do it. If I said the season, it's easy. If I say last ten games, it's easy. Last five games with both Should teams. Should we say since games. January? Half a season? No. Five Games because both teams have lost, because both teams have played shit, because both teams have had decent results. I want to get a fair team out. That's why. Just to make it slightly difficult, it's it's an exam question. It can't be easy. Go on then. Okay. Okay. okay you're gonna laugh, but because you're gonna want Ramsdale in, and I understand why. I understand why, but I really think it's fifty fifty this season because De Gea has been probably our best player all season. Mm-hmm. Well, his fate is facing a million shots, so yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, <laughs> and he, he saves a lot. Obviously, there's criticisms against him and his feet and he didn't come off the line, etc. But There's no distribution from Delia. Yeah, I yeah I'm sticking but, with Ramsdale on that one, I'm afraid. Yeah, okay, I'm, Ramsdale I'm, for Harry. I thought, what's your final choice? I'm going with De Gea. Because he, okay. he's, he's a better shot stuffer. Okay, fine. We'll, we'll, we'll put that down. So, uh, defense, what do you go, what do you go with? Because you're obviously going to make the deciding factor. No, no, no! I'm staying out of this. I'm oh staying out of this. God, you I'm, 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 the, I'm the examiner. You I'll tell you at the end. Me. I will tell you at the end what my team is. Go okay. On. So, uh, defense four defenders. We're going for a four three two one, which four two three one, whichever one plays. So, four defenders. Who are we going for? Harry, you go first. Um, at right back. Uh, who who who? Who plays a right back for United? It's um, I don't know. I, I don't know either, to be honest. <laughs> no, Mambisaka. Mambisaka or Dallo. It's one of the two, yeah. isn't it? That's why I'm not. Don't know who's been playing in the last ten um ten games. To be honest, he's been chop and change, but right under Ragnik, Rang, Ragnik, it's normally uh, Dallo. And, yeah. and, I, and I have to say that Cedric hasn't hasn't been bad there. We, we'd have Tommy Asu, but he hasn't played in those games, so uh, he's back. He's back. He's too. back. Yeah. I mean, if 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 you could choose Tommy Asu, I would, but because it's obviously on form in the last few games, and yeah. I'm going for Cedric. I am. Cedric, okay. Okay. <sighs> to be honest, I haven't seen enough of Arsenal, but I, I have seen United, so I'll go with Cedric as well. Cedric, okay. Just watch him tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let Let's go for the other three choices, Harry. Give me all three. In 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 the centre back roles, um, I think I think. You know, White, White and Gabriel have been better than Varane, and and I mean, do we need to have the Maguire conversation? Again? <laughs> no, no, I, I, right, I, I thought we'll because... just let that one go. I'm sure, yeah, no. uh, unless we were in person, uh, yeah. <laughs> right? Um, and and then at the le- the left back, I think you know Tierney. I mean, he's not available, so I don't know if, if you not. are basing on. Nah, if, if it's if it's not available, if the player is not available, then no. Yeah, the, 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 then I think we we we're struggling then at, at, for for an Arsenal. Your, that Tavares, Tavares, what's his name? Tavares. No, 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 Tavares. Yeah, he's been. He, wasn't he at fault for a lot of the goals against? Or who was two it? goals, he's been at fault. He hasn't two, been two, the best games. though. So we'll, no, we'll no. give him, we'll give him a left back. Who is it? Um, what do you call it? Um, Tellers. 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 Shaw's been injured, isn't he? He's out for the season now. I think. Okay, Ted, Ted, so Ted, Ted, he's not a bad player, to be honest with you. There's he's all right. He's a bit slow, and yeah, <laughs> not, not, not the ideal scenario for a wing back. No, he's slow. <laughs> but, but all he's right. better than Tavares, so we'll, we'll give yes. him that. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So we've got from uh, Harry. We've got Cedric, Ben White, Gabriel, and Teles. Uh, I thought, what are you going for? Uh, to be honest, Cedric. I agree with them. I agree with them. Right. Okay. Wow. So you're two midfielders mm-hmm. now. You want Zed. Two, okay. two midfielders, yes, please. Uh, I mean, I, I think Chaka and Party just, just, just. No, but Party's injured. Party's not available. Oh, okay. Go on, go, go, put Lakanga, put Lakanga in, please. <laughs> Lakanga, you mean? Oh, sorry. Uh, well, Chaka's, Chaka's going to be one of them, and then uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, should we give him? Um, well, Pogba's injured as well, isn't he? I mean, like Pogba's gone. Who, who, who have you got? McTominay. McTominay, yeah. Fred. Fred's been all right, hasn't he? Fred's been really good under Ragnik. Well, he's been one of our better players. Oh, right, we'll go with yeah. Fred and Chaka. Okay. Two left 
to, to be honest, I agree because I would have maybe looked at McTominay instead of Fred. But no, well, actually, no, Fred's been better than McTominay. But okay. the thing is, and Shaka's thing is, been good as well. You can't yeah, to be fair, Shaka's yeah. not been bad. And the thing is, like with McTominay, he's injured. He's he's, he's on the sidelines. Always so is training and stuff now. So yeah, you can't you can't really well be selected. Him. Yeah. Okay, let, let's go with the uh, attacking midfielders. Uh, okay, so what are we them. doing? Are we doing one three. attacking and two wingers? So what we're doing is, uh, yeah, what one attacking midfielder, two wingers. So if it was attacking midfielder, it's a comparison between Odegaard and Bruno. And Bruno, I think it's got to be Odegaard, hasn't it? On form, it's got to be Odegaard. Bruno's been really poor recently. But if it was like player for player. It's difficult then. Yeah, then, yeah. then you are going Bruno, aren't you? All day yeah. on form, it's got to be Odegaard, yeah. Okay, Odegaard for both of you. Then we got two wingers. Who are we going for? I can't. I can't. I'll give you Saka. I'll give you Saka. That's, and and yeah. you have to give me Martinelli as well. I you don't know, but, but listen, Sancho's been really good recently. And do you know, against Liverpool, when he came on, he, he was the, our best player when he came on as well. He, he was the one who was stacking. And I love you, you know that, but I can't yeah. have it. Still, I'll, so, go with, I'll go You go with Martinelli. I'm going, I'm going with Saka. And Martinelli, yeah. I'm gonna go with Saka and Sancho just because I haven't seen enough Mart. I haven't seen enough Arsenal, if I'm honest. Okay. That. All right. Uh, okay. Number nine now. I'm, I'm not. I'm not going to disagree with um, putting Ronaldo in there. I was going to put in Katia and or Lacazette, you but okay, we'll go with Ronaldo then. I was about to swear then. <laughs> <in> Ramadan. Okay. <laughs> okay. So just just to recap, then how are your team is Ramsdale and Gold, Cedric, Ben White, Gabriel, and Alex Telles, uh as your four defenders. Xhaka as Fred as the holding midfielders, Odegaard as the number 10, Saka Martinelli as the wingers and Ronaldo as a striker. I thought you've got David De Gea and yeah. the rest of the team is the same other than Sancho instead of Martinelli. Yeah. Oh, so, I, what's he playing at? So there's, yeah. eight, there's eight or nine Liverpool, Arsenal players. Over. Arsenal players. So. Oh, one second. I wanted to make a little change. I went to bring Maguire. I oh, was only messing. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I think... Based on that, I think you both have picked most of the players that I would. I would prefer Ramsdale in goal, not just because of Arsenal play, but if you're going to play the system out from the back, yeah, his distribution is a lot better. Yeah. Uh, Cedric has been very competent. He's been decent. Uh, I've seen a bit of Dalo. I've seen a bit of uh, Van Bissaka. Van Bissaka gives nothing attackingly, so I yeah. think he's absolutely no goal. Dalo does give a lot more attackingly, but he's defensively a bit shoddy. So that that's where yeah. I kind of do it. Telles, I agree with. I think he's better than uh, Nuno Torres. Well, he, he he was good in the Portuguese league. Well, uh, Xhaka, Fred are okay. I think Fred has been very good. He's probably been Manchester United's on form player recently, to be fair, yeah. and most of the season. Um, when it comes to Odegaard and Bruno, Just I quickly, think quickly, quickly on that. What about El Nene? Come on, he only played one game. In the last I think El Nenny is a very good player who Arsenal should he 100% he play. Played, yeah. He hasn't played enough. He hasn't played enough. I think he's a very good player. I think he's a very decent player who can do a job, what you tell him to do, and he's very good at sitting. I've covered him in the last two episodes of the podcast because that's what Arteta needed to do, and as soon as he does it, he gets a win. But anyway, going back to the you, main you, question, you, which is... You're attacking midfielder now, yeah. Attacking midfielder. Yeah, Odegaard and... Bruno, I would say this. I think while Bruno is an excellent, excellent player, let's not get it wrong. From a team's point, if you found the manager and I'm setting up a setting up a team, I'd rather have Odegaard because he's going to do more for the team than Bruno will. In what respect, though? In what respect? In terms of defending and stuff, and still in terms of pushing as a unit. When you're playing as a team, Bruno, I will chuck Bruno on. When you need a goal, when you need a freak, when you need something Ode- creating Odegaard, out of nothing. Odegaard pulls strings at that. Ode- Odegaard you know what the will thing keep, is? Tick, keep the team ticking. Do you know that last season when Bruno was on form, I mean, you know, we were when we finished second or whatever. Yeah. If you're looking at that Bruno or this Odegaard, I'd go for that Bruno. But this yeah, year, so would, we, so would we. So would we. No, I, 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 actually, I won't because Bruno Fernandez that season, while he was the best player, one of the best players in the Premier League, he was only that player because everything in Manchester United was going through him for attack. And the reason was he was occupying and taking up space from the strikers, from the wingers, and he had a free role. From a defensive point of view, from a team structure point of view, the team was built around him to do that. 
if you want a system and if you want to play as a team, you're better off having Odegaard to pull the string to allow your players to flourish. If you want to build, have Bruno on your team, he has to be your focal point. And there's this, uh, there's this new thing now why. as well, Atar, with the talk about pressures. Have you heard about yeah, these yeah, pressures? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right, and I was doing, because of Nabs asking me earlier today, what's that pressures about? I was like, well, it's a, it's a thing they're all talking about now. And I think I think Odegaard, is, he, he presses more, doesn't he, the, in, from the front? I mean, do you know, the thing is, is, I think it's difficult with that because the way United are playing right now, they don't know whether to stick or twist. They don't know to press or not. Yeah, exactly. And and that's what's causing the, yeah. last season. Bruno uh, thrived in that team because they were playing on the break, and he was the last man or the second last man who wouldn't do any defensive work, but he would pick the ball. I disagree. He would run with it. Do you know why Bruno oh. does his fair share a fair share of defensive work? He, he's, there's loads of clips of him running back to tackling from, you know, when we're in the tackle. Oh, even Ozil even did that. Even maybe, 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 the camera, too. maybe the camera doesn't catch him then. Nah, <laughs> nah the, thing, the thing is, it's funny you mentioned Ozil because you, you said Odegaard was better than Ozil on one of your podcasts. So I, I remember listening to that one. I, I, it, we didn't say that at all. Yes, we did. Didn't say that at all. <laughs> I'm going to find the clip for you and watch. <laughs> <laughs> this 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 is this is getting contentious. And I like it. <laughs> catch that in the in the, uh, the the review show after after the game. We yeah. Ab- absolutely. That, uh, but uh, but okay. I think I think the Odegaard Bruno debate will go on. But I think just let's not get it wrong. Bruno is one of the best players yeah. in the Premier League, right? Like, there's no question about it. I just think if you're gonna have Bruno, you have to have him as your talisman, as your player. You cannot build a team around. The reason for me why Manchester United struggle is they have too many talismans. They have too many players around which the team should be built. They have Bruno, they have Pogba, they have Ronaldo. I think our problem is, is a lot of the time as well, is is we're always looking for Ronaldo. So there's times where, you know, Bruno might shoot instead or or pass to someone else, but he sees Ronaldo and then he's he's just passing and lose the ball a lot. And I think... Part it's the same is, thing with Portugal, yeah. right? When, when you see Bruno Fernandes play for Portugal, you will see what I'm talking about. Yeah, no, he's, he's everything's Ronaldo centric, which is yeah, fine. Exactly. It is Ronaldo, but sometimes you shouldn't be afraid to pass to others. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, so what I'm saying is, if you had, if you swap Bruno Fernandes for an Odegaard in the Manchester United team, you'd probably see a lot bigger of a difference. That's my point. It's risky. Because you know Bruno would fit right into your system the way it is at the minute, pressing and just look for the pass. But if if he presses, yeah, absolutely. But yeah, I don't yeah. think that's. I, I'm all right. I'm all right with swapping. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, guys, I think we're we're over an hour. I think let's just to finish that off. I will agree with Saka and I will agree with Sancho on that. No point. way. How many yeah, I think. You? <laughs> no, I think recently Martinelli has struggled a bit to get. I'm just looking last five games. I'm not looking the season. I'm not looking ten games because if it's ten games, Martinelli's clearly done more. But Sancho, he's got his confidence back, and I'm trying to see a bit more of him. What I saw at Dortmund, as you know, as everyone knows from the previous podcast, I'm a big Dortmund fan, right? So I've seen him play at Dortmund, take on players, and create some things. He just isn't getting the delivery, and he isn't getting the support. I can see him frustrated because he is literally alone trying to do something and that frustrates me because I'm a very big fan of his there's a there's actually a stat somewhere I can't remember what it is exactly but I think in the last however many uh, games Sancho only one player has done more um, progressive carries than him in the league and that's yeah, exactly that's sent maximum from from Newcastle so yeah you know like in terms of Martinelli and Sancho I think I think just the Martinelli is a brilliant player don't get me wrong but I just think Sancho edges it for me yeah, I think S- S- Sancho on current form for me, I think he'll bring more to the team. And there's no question as Ronaldo up front. But to be fair, if I'm the manager and I'm playing, I will probably have Ronaldo on the bench and I will have Martinelli up top and bring Ronaldo on as soon as I need a goal. Because no, I know he will do it. i tell you something, that is a mistake because we've tried that before where we, where we, when we needed to win or something and we've left Ronaldo on the bench. But really, it should be the opposite where you put your you start your best players and then you take them off. I mean, yeah, you, you, you could do that. That's fine. I, I wouldn't disagree, but I wouldn't play Ronaldo for the entire game. No, I agree. I think, But I think yeah. taking him off is better than bringing him on. Yeah, uh, uh, you've seen more of United, so I, I, I won't disagree with that. But I think for me, Martinelli will be in the team, but he'll be my first sub. Yeah, fair enough. I, th- I, I, do oh, like I, I think for team. Arsenal fans, if we don't see Ronaldo in that starting lineup, yeah. we will be, be very relieved. Boost. 
Yeah, yeah. Big, big boost. And and actually, just just touching very quickly, I know you want to wrap up, Zed, on the on on where his mental, um, where he'll emotionally be rather. Uh, given mm. given his loss, just because he may physically be, and he probably will be pushing the manager for a start, we we don't know where he emotionally will be on the pitch as well. I think I think it's a scary thought that if he's if he's upset or obviously which he will be, mm. I think I think he'll be going going for blood, gunning gunning for blood. Pardon my pardon my <laughs> friend. No, I, I think it's a very difficult time for him. Well, he already uh, went for blood when he knocked that phone out of that kid's hand, didn't he? Yeah, but we don't know the full story there. Well, there's clips yeah. there, though, isn't there? Yeah, I, I think... Uh, let, 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 let's not talk about controversies or the things or uh, let's start what's about, going on. Let's start talking about Pizzagate in a second. <laughs> yeah. Okay, guys, it's been fantastic. It's been very enjoyable. Uh, I thought it's been lovely to have you on. Honestly, it's, it's been Thank absolutely you. brilliant yeah. to get that contrast and someone else on board uh, and a bit of a segue from the organist talk always, right? It is the organist podcast, but then, I think we will try more of this. Before you wrap up, can we get Mason Greenwood into that lineup? At all? Oh, there's no need. There's just no need. He, uh, I, I'm, there's... I'm sorry, I can't comment on those. Yeah. Tell it, tell it to <laughs> there. Tell it to I, I think he'd have probably been getting Martinelli's role. I, but okay, if, no. I, if I'm honest, I'll be completely honest with the Mason Greenwood thing. Even if he is, by you know, correctly or incorrectly, whatever, said that he's not guilty, whatever. I still think it's poor form if we if we play him or we continue to play him. I think unfortunately mm. that these allegations are even if it's not the, the rape allegations, or whatever it is, there's some form of sexual harassment or something in there, isn't there? There's some chill, chill, chill. It was just there. a band. It was just a band. No, no. I'm just, I'm just, <laughs> I'm, just trying, I'm just trying to say. Yeah, yeah, I'm just fair trying enough. To say, yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. I, 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 no, no. I'm, I'm going to stop that topic here now. I think. Uh, let, 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 let's not get any deeper onto that. This is not a crime watch or anything else, right? So, not so, crime let, watch. Yeah. So, <laughs> not crime watch. <laughs> yeah. So let, let, let's just focus. Let's focus on the football. That's what we're here to do. But anyway, just 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 wrapping up before I was interrupted by Harry. Sorry. But, <laughs> no worry. Thank you very much, Atar, for having uh, coming on and making this a very lively podcast. No, and Harry, as me. always, thank you very much for being here and providing us with laughter and good insight. I've been Zed. You can catch me on Zed at TAGP on Twitter. Harry, you want to plug yourself? Yeah, I'm at uh, at Harry Carnu uh, on Twitter. Thanks very much for listening, guys. Thanks. Thanks. Atta, if you want to plug yourself, feel free. If not, no pressure. Uh, I won't plug myself on this uh, podcast. No, I'm joking. I don't, uh, I, I don't actually um, have plug anything. Plug yourself on Crime Watch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I, uh, no, all jokes aside, I really appreciate being on. It's, it's been a good laugh and um, I really do hope Arsenal lose tomorrow. <laughs> no, I, I think our uh, viewers will appreciate the, the podcast today. Anyway, thank you very much for listening. Uh, hope you have a lovely Friday night. We'll catch you all after the game and we'll break it down, see what happened. Good night.